Okay, welcome back. Um, if you've watched all the other videos, you should now have a failover cluster and a cluster shared volume area. What we're going to do now is uh, actually install the Hyper-V role onto our five um, clustered servers, servers. So, we'll go to Server Manager. As you can see at the moment, there's no roles at all installed. So we're going to add role, click Next, Hyper-V, and Next again, and Next. Now at this point, you choose which um, NIC cards are going to be re available for the actual virtual server. In our case you've got LAN B there which was in the iSCSI so we don't want to use that one. We can use 3, 1 and 2. So we'll tick those. This LAN here we're going to um, leave as dedicated to the management of the server so we can remote in using that IP address rather than coming in through any of the uh, IPs that are assigned to the Hyper-V role. And then the other LAN here, the LAN A iSCSI, uh, obviously we don't want to use that for the Hyper-V role either. So we've chosen our three uh, NIC cards, click Next and Install. We'll install the Hyper-V role, obviously need to restart so we're going to do that and then you'll come back to us uh, once the restart is finished. So welcome back, as you can see we have rebooted the server, it's just finishing off the Hyper-V installation and as soon as that's done we'll uh, show you how to actually create a high availability um, Hyper-V server. So Hyper-V is installed, so let's go to the uh, failover cluster manager in this case and if you remember from the last video we've got services and applications up here so what we're going to do is right click that virtual machine new virtual machine on Hyper-V1 and click next what do we actually want to call this this virtual machine so store the virtual machine in a location this one's automatically picked up the cluster storage volume 1 area if, as long as we store it in that it will then be stored on the SAN click next how much memory do we want to give this um, so let's give it uh, 2 gig click next connect it to Hyper-V LAN 1 click next check the name of the virtual hard drive how, what size do we want it to be, so 127 gig is fine click next and uh, we're going to install an operating system uh, later so click next there and finish that actually now create all the files necessary for the actual virtual server it'll store all those files in the uh, C drive in that uh, cluster shared volume area which in effect actually stores all the files on the uh, SAN. So it's creating the virtual machine and we're finished. So as you can see we've now got uh, under our service and applications we've got a uh, virtual server which uh, we can manage from on the right hand side here we can do all the managing the virtual machine um, do the settings so change its uh, how much memory it's got add another hard drive into it all those sorts of things that you can normally do with the Hyper-V manager but what we can do from here as well is if we right click um, you can move the virtual machine to another node so we can move it over to one of the other nodes um, this way we can actually move anything that we've got stored on Hyper-V1 move it over to another virtual server um, carry out any maintenance on Hyper-V1 and then move them back again um, at the moment the machine's not running but if we uh, start it up let's right click it and connect to it see what it's actually doing and as you can see there's the virtual machine, obviously got boot value, there's no hard drive in it or any, no operating system set up for it. 
but what we have got now is the live migration so the server is running so instead of having to actually turn the virtual server off move it and then uh, carry on we can actually live migrate it now what we're going to do in a, another video once we've set uh, a few uh, virtual servers up for you is actually run um, a video live video feed from one of the servers and then live migrate it and show you exactly what uh, what effect this has on the user so uh, we'll go away now build up um, some more virtual servers and then come back to you and show you that uh, the live migration feature